Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio again, and this is my how-to wood inlay for beginners. And I say beginners uh, because if you're on YouTube, you're probably not a professional, but really I think anybody can benefit from something in here. And I'm going to show you how I went and did this blacktail knot here, how I went through all those steps ending up at this finished product here. But it's also useful for bow tie joints, other Dutchman joints, really uh, anything with straight lines, this video should be able to help you out. There's kind of a long list of tools here. I'm not gonna go over each one right now. I'm gonna go through them as they come up and also mention which ones you have to have and which ones are just kind of nice to have. So first thing I was squaring this up so it was perfectly even on the corners and now I'm going to use the Scotch double-sided tape. You don't have to do this, but you kind of do if you want it to be perfect. No matter how tight you hold down with your hand, they always tend to wiggle loose. And normally you don't have to have them perfectly lined up to the corners if you're doing a bow tie joint or something, but for this one, I obviously wanted it to be symmetrical. Now I'm going on to the marking knife. Uh, marking knife is really useful. It's not a super fancy one. It looks cool, but it was like 20 bucks. And you're just gonna go really lightly. Remember, lighter passes are better than heavier passes. Just go light, light, light. Instead of one heavy pass, make four or five really light passes. I tend to use this strop a lot. Uh, it's good for your chisels too. You don't need to resharpen them. You just hit them on the strop a couple times. And I should also mention that just a cheap X-Acto knife works really well for this. The only thing I don't like about them is they get dull really quick. And once you pop it off, you can see a nice defined line the whole way around. And you don't have to color it in, but it tends to be a useful trick. A lot of dovetail guys will do this so they don't cut the wrong part out. Now I'm going to get out the plunge router. This is one of those tools you don't absolutely have to have, but it's really, really nice. Uh, you can use a drill with a Forstner bit. Um, I like these spiral bits. They're a little more expensive, but they last forever and cut really clean holes. As you see there, I left it a little proud, so when I pound it all the way in, it's not going to be below the surface of the table. And don't try to get too close to your lines. You want to be about a sixteenth of an inch away from your line. It can make getting that clean chisel line that I'll show you here in a minute a little bit harder. I want to touch briefly on getting the right tool for the job. These are some very, very nice blue spruce chisels uh, from a local maker in Portland. They cost like 75, 80 bucks a piece, which is crazy if you start shopping chisels for the first time. But after you buy enough cheap chisels, it really saves you the time. It's just, I wish I would have bought these first, but anyway, most people buy the cheapest ones, then the second cheapest, and then eventually get a chisel like this. Okay, back to the actual inlay. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to remove half the material remaining between what my router left and my line. And I take half off, then half again, until my chisel will just only fit in that line. And I'm going between hand pressure and my mallet here, depending on which way the grain's running. I'm able to use just my hand pressure or the uh, sometimes I need the wood mallet. I can't stress enough how much you want to take your time here. Uh, I'm not the most patient person, which is kind of unusual for a woodworker. I like to, I like to rush things a little bit. Um, if you try to take too much wood off of the chisel, you'll end up taking a little piece out with the grain, which there's one spot that I kind of messed up that I'll show you here in the end. And that probably came from me trying to take off too much wood at once. Here's a good shot of what a nice, really sharp chisel will do. You can see that mirror polished back there, which they didn't actually take very long to get that shine on them uh, straight out of the package from Blue Spruce. I should mention that this was absolutely terrifying for me to do this. I don't wanna make this sound like this was just another day for me and this was super easy. I was, the entire time I did this, I was terrified I was gonna blow a piece out because you really only get one shot to do this properly. And I ended up getting pretty lucky on this one. I was very happy with the results, but don't think that this is going to go perfect every time. And if it doesn't go right for you, then you did something totally unusual, totally wrong. If something does go wrong for you, don't get too worked up about it. There's pretty much always a way to fix it. People think wood is not like metal and you can't fix it, but you can, you can usually do something to remedy most mistakes. Anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm putting a slight bevel on the underside. And this is going to give excess glue somewhere to go. And it's also going to make it a little bit easier to slide in when I go to pound it in. 
you don't have to spend a ton of time here. Just give it a nice little bevel. When I'm doing my bow tie joints, I don't even use a chisel. I just take it over to my stationary belt sander and put a little bevel uh, underneath all the sides. I'm a little embarrassed by this part here because you get to actually see how I work. Uh, I should be using a tiny little paintbrush and a cute little jar full of a perfect amount of glue, but this is how I actually do it most of the time. So here you go. This part is by far the most nerve wracking of the whole process because if you get it part way in and something doesn't go right, you won't be able to get it out. So just go nice and slow and even. Now that I got it in there, I'm gonna show you my favorite trick for fixing tiny little imperfections that basically every woodworker I know does, but not a lot of people talk about it. Uh, this is elm dust and walnut dust. Most people use just one color. I found if I mix up the colors, it gives more of a natural look, how the color changes naturally in wood anyway, so there's not like a solid brown line that goes around this. And this is gonna fill in the tiny little gaps that are inevitably gonna be in there. For bow tie joints, I'll usually just use my little block plane to uh, bring these down to flush with the table. Uh, for this one and the weird grain, I took my belt sander and here my orbital sander. And just going really even, you don't want to sand down any divots next to the black tail knot or the bow tie, whatever you're doing. And this one turned out pretty good. You can see the one little flaw that we're going to address here, that little gap right there. And I'll show you how to fix that. For this one, we're going to use CA glue, also known as super glue. And this one, I have an activator that hardens it in just a couple seconds. So you can sand it about 30 seconds afterwards. And it does dry a little darker than wood glue. So that's why I'm using this elm dust instead of the walnut. And just put a tiny little bit in there, just as little as you can get away with. And I didn't show myself spraying it with the applicator, but you're just going to spray it with the applicator. It hardens almost instantly and you can sand it in under 30 seconds. Again, don't spend too much time in one spot. You want to sand kind of evenly across the table so you don't wear a kind of a dip in there that you'll see when you get the finish on. But there it is. That's the finished blacktail knot, as I call it. There it is with after I got the finish on. And if you're curious, here's a couple of shots of the whole table. The client wanted legs that actually complemented that blacktail knot. And I should mention she actually wanted this blacktail knot inlaid in there. This isn't something I just put into all my tables. This is something she specifically requested. Okay, that's the whole video. If I left anything out, or if you have any additional questions or comments, uh, please be sure to ask me in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.